Hi there, and welcome to this video about Solid Thinking Compose. Today, step four of the 12 steps to Navier-Stokes, and in this case, it's about the Burgess equation. Um, yeah, it's, as you know, it's from Lorena Barber, so I'm just referring to her work here. And also, you may know I did a series about implementing this code in MATLAB step by step, so I'm going much more quicker um, through this guide here. Uh, the Burgess equation is here. Um, we have the first step is we discretize it numerically, and then we solve for the next step in time, which is denoted by u from n plus 1. And that's the numerical part. We have initial, initial condition here with, um, with phi as a parameter, and there's an analytical solution, which we are handed over here. Uh, we can implement this by using SymPy, because SymPy uses um, symbolic math, so you can derive or integrate with SymPy just symbolically, uh, which saves you a lot of time and um, prevents you from doing stupid mistakes like uh, forgetting a minus or plus or something like that. All right, um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the code. So I took the code from from the Python notebook and simplified it a little bit. So we have here the analytical solution, then the variable declaration, and this goes right about here. Then we have uh, plotting the initial uh, analytical function, and here the numerical calculation happens. So here the equations like those are implemented so you're calculating your next step in time and what's interesting about here is that you have a you have a boundary condition what's it called it's, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. let me see a periodic boundary condition so you're saying that this is the initial function and one boundary condition is that the last point in your space, right over here, is equal to the first point in space. So if the wave propagates in this direction and this, this peak um, comes right on here, it will get transferred to the beginning again. And we can see that in a code also happening. So I um, already showed you a bit of how it's look how it uh, looks like but um, yeah let's just run it for a second and here's a python console all right so we have your analytical function and here's your plotting with the analytical function and the computational um, points compared to each other so i suggest that you play a little bit around with it so for example if i just say we want to see 10 time steps. And that looks like this. So analytical computational is pretty much the same, but as this is increased, uh, 110 was initial, let's say we do 220. I think it's right before the, the peak gets transferred to the other side again. I, it already happened, so you can see. Uh, let me just see, for 200. Yeah, it's still here. And for 300, it should be right over here. Yeah. So you can, can play a little bit around with that. See how the, the wave propagates and gets smaller. So that's about it for the Berg's equation. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to suggest anything to me, well, what I should cover. Is it um, is the MATLAB code enough? Or sh should I spend more time in describing what the code does where? Um, just leave me a note, I, uh, I'd be happy to, to uh, implement this, this for you. And as always, leave a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel, it would be really good for me. <laughs> Thanks and goodbye.